Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting game between international master Lasse Ostebolovic, also known as uh, I am Lovlas on Lee Chess and uh, everyone's favorite artificial intelligence these days, uh, Lila, Lila Chess Zero. Uh, zero in her name uh, stands for uh, no human interference as no humans interfered in, uh, in her learning process so everything she knows about chess uh, she taught herself. Uh, some of you might uh, object to me uh, referring to her as a she, uh, maybe I should refer to her as an it, but uh, I, I mean, it makes really no difference. Uh, just makes it easier, they chose, a, they chose a, a woman's name, so might as well refer to her as a she. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that's really not relevant here, is it? It's uh, the, the way she plays chess and uh, that, that's what we all want to see. So, uh, I chose this game uh, bec not only because uh, it's against the French, but also because it's a very nice game where, once again, uh, Lila chooses a very human approach uh, in, uh, to, <laughs> in dealing with this game. So, let's see the game. This game, Lila has the white pieces and he, uh, she opens with e4. So e6, we have the French defense, d4, d5, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. So once again, the winner variation. Uh, we have e5, advanced variation, and you might remember from my yesterday's video uh, that nice game from 1995 between Garry Kasparov and Vasily Ivanchuk. Ivanchuk went b6 here, uh, and after the standard a3, Ivanchuk went this uh, <laughs> very, very powerful idea of bishop to f8. Uh, but in this game, we have the standard line, knight to e7, uh, now again a3, and bishop captures on c3. Uh, b captures on c3 and c5. So, uh, the, the, the variation uh, in my previous video, I said that this is like uh, something you will encounter most often. And here, bishop to d3. Another way, another way this uh, will be played is queen to g4, where black can usually give up, uh, give up the g7 pawn. Uh, but here, Lila goes uh, bishop to d3. Uh, we have knight b to c6, uh, which is uh, definitely the the precise idea. You don't want to play something like c4. c4 seems like an interesting decision, uh, because you will uh, maybe push push uh, white's bishop back. Uh, white's bishop will not be on this strong diagonal. Uh, but this is something that doesn't go uh, with the, the basic ideas of the French defense. In, in the French defense, you want to control the center. And uh, whenever you feel like it, you want to be able to destroy the center. Uh, but uh, by locking down the center with c4, uh, white can even keep his king in the center and uh, white's king will be perfectly safe there. Uh, so basically, you're, you're not going to have too much fun here. So uh, after bishop to d3, knight b to c6. Uh, queen to g4 now, going for the g7 pawn, and now queen to a5. Uh, and here, bishop to d2, defending the c3 pawn. Uh, you don't really have the option of going queen g7 uh, with the idea that after queen captures with check king d1, now black will capture, and then you will capture here, uh, because black will just play rook g8 and a left in your face. You now have to move the queen, and now you lose a whole rook. So this would be very unfortunate. Uh, do not do something like this. So bishop to d2, defending the c3 pawn. Uh, and here we have castles. Uh, a brave move by Ian Lovelace, as both bishops and the queen are eyeing that uh, that king side. Uh, knight to f3, bringing the knight into the game. Uh, and now we have f5. And here uh, it seems like a move that is really screaming for e captures uh, on f6 en passant. Uh, you don't want your bishop uh, not to be eyeing the h7 pawn. Uh, but Lila here actually doesn't uh, doesn't capture. She plays uh, queen to f4. Uh, and here we have b6. Again, uh, locking this in with c4, it seems like you've done a great job with f5. Uh, you got rid of the queen, the bishop is no longer a threat, but uh, even if you push c4 now and you force the bishop to e2, uh, again, you're, don't, you're not really going to have much fun here as black. White, white can play simple moves like maybe queen h4, knight g5, uh, attack h7, pressure d6 pawn. So definitely don't want don't wanna to commit to a move like c4. So after queen f4, b6 now, preparing to develop uh, the light square bishop to a6. Uh, we have castles by Lila and now bishop to a6, uh, offering a trade of the light square bishop. B captures on c5, b, ca uh, b captures on c5, and now rook f to e1. Uh, rook a to b8, uh, assuming the open b file. Uh, queen to h4, and now uh, black has to make some uh, uncomfortable decisions here. 
Uh, the queen is very nicely placed on h4. Your white is definitely having ideas of knight to g5 with ideas of queen to h7. And also the knight from g5 will be uh, threatening to capture that e6 pawn. So probably uh, best idea for black here would be simply bishop back to c8 uh, to defend this pawn. And then knight to g5 wouldn't really be much of a threat as you could simply kick it away. You know, no, 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 harm, no harm done. Uh, but here, and you don't want to play something like knight g6 to try and kick the queen away because queen h5 and then knight to g5 will really be a threat because you no longer have the option of h6. So uh, E.M. Lovelace uh, goes immediately for h6 to stop any knight g5 ideas in the future, uh, but this gives Leela the opportunity to grab the h6 pawn with the bishop. So bishop captures on h6. Pawn captures and queen captures. Uh, is it really a piece sacrifice? Well, she did uh, grab two pawns, two very important pawns for the piece. So maybe it can't uh, really be considered a sacrifice, but uh, yeah, if it was three pawns for the piece, then it would be like an exchange. But uh, with two pawns for the piece, then yeah, I think it could be considered a sacrifice. Uh, so now rook to f7, uh, definitely the best idea. You don't want to allow knight to g5 with uh, with some terrible threats of uh, queen queen h7, and again uh, <coughs> uh, with threats of capturing on h6 on e6. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so here we have first bishop captures on a6, uh, queen captures on a6, and now knight to g5. First attacking the rook. Uh, there's always time to grab uh, the e6 pawn. Lila is in no rush to do so, and. Uh, here, uh, Lovelace played knight to d8, uh, which is definitely the best move. You wanna uh, you wanna bring the knight uh, closer to the defense, and you wanna guard the e6 pawn. Trying to guard the rook with something like rook to g7 uh, would quickly fall apart to do to queen captures on e6 with check. And after king to f8, uh, back queen back to f6, check king j8, and now rook to e3. And here, white would have a clear clear idea of rook to h3, queen h6 could be an idea, queen to h8, the knight is very nicely covering uh, both h7 and uh, f7. Uh, so here Lolas goes for knight to d8, and here we have knight captures on f7. Knight captures on f7 and now queen, capt uh, queen to f6, uh, attacking the knight on e7. Uh, you don't uh, you don't want to play a move like rook to e8 or something like this to defend the rook because then again rook to e3 followed by rook to g3 will be a very powerful idea. So after queen to e uh, queen to f6, king to f8, uh, guarding the knight and also making some room for the king to to run to the queen side if needed. Uh, here we have rook a to b1, uh, rook to b6. So if the rooks are exchanged, then uh, black will improve his pawn structure. Uh, h4 now, and here we see what uh, the real idea behind the position is. So, uh, Lovlas has two knights for a rook, which is definitely in favor of black, uh, but Lila has this uh, passed h pawn and she is not afraid to use it. Uh, we have knight to g8, attacking the queen, queen to g6, uh, and the knight back to e7. So, Lovlas repeats the position, and Lila repeats back, queen to f6. Uh, we have knight back to g8, again attacking the queen, queen to g6, and the knight to e7. And here, if uh, Lila would repeat once again queen to f6, uh, we would have a draw by threefold repetition. But Lila is not interested in a draw, as it seems, uh, and she plays queen to g3. Uh, so, okay, queen to c4. Uh, we have rook captures, pawn captures, and now rook to b1, attacking the b6 pawn. Uh, we have b5, now the rook, now the pawn is protected by the queen, and now h5. Uh, as you all know, past pawns must be pushed. Uh, we have d4, uh, c captures on d4, c captures on d4, and now queen to b3. Uh, Lila offers a trade of queens, uh, which wouldn't really favor black. black. If black captures, then c captures, and uh, then a4 creates uh, now a passed pawn uh, all the way on the queen side. So white would have a passed a pawn and a passed h pawn. Uh, so we have knight captures on e5, basically a free pawn, why not capture it? Uh, h6, now black definitely must uh, deal with this pawn. Uh, once again, if you capture, uh, black doesn't even have to capture with the pawn. Better yet, yeah, better leave the pawn here so so this pawn, so black's d pawn cannot uh, start running forward. Uh, so better rook captures on b3, and after king to g8, as you do have to attend uh, to the past h pawn, now you will capture here, and after knight moves, then the past a pawn uh, will start running off the board, and at, at one point, black will definitely have to give uh, give up at least one of the knights, and then it will be a slow death for black. 
So after h6, uh, we have king to f7. Uh, now comes queen captures on b5, queen captures, and rook captures, uh, attacking the knight on e5. Uh, we have knight to c4. Uh, now comes a4. The pawn was attacked on a3. Uh, knight to c6, and now uh, rook to c5, uh, attacking both of black's knights. We have knight 4 to a5, and now comes g4. Uh, g4, a very powerful idea by Lila. If f captures on g4, then rook to g5, you cut off the king, and then this pawn is uh, free, to, free to become a queen. So after g4, uh, king to g6, uh, and now we have g5. Now the past h pawn is protected. Again, you can never capture this, because this guy is then unstoppable. And uh, another thing, uh, you can see that uh, it's never a good idea for both of your knights to be protecting each other. Uh, because now, uh, if you move this knight, then rook captures this knight. If you move this knight, then rook captures this knight. So black doesn't really have a move. He can, he can simply wait for, for white to finish this any, any way he, he wants. Or she wants, in this case. Uh, so e5... Uh, we have rook to d5, now preparing rook to d6 check. Uh, e4, rook to d6 check. Uh, if you if you go to h5, then the h pawn marches forward. King to h7, uh, rook to d7 check. King to g8, and uh, we have g6. Uh, f4, black also has a couple of pawns. He does want to push them as well. Uh, we have h7 check, king to h8, and now rook to f7. And in this position, uh, Lovas resigned the game as uh, there is really no defense against uh, rook to f8. Uh, you could continue this, maybe push e3, uh, or, or or you could try something, for example. Yeah, I mean, you don't really gain anything by moving the knights. So let's say e3, and then after rook checks, king moves, now you get a queen, and now you have uh, basically uh, the theme from our eternal board from, <laughs> from yesterday. Uh, rook, rook f6 check, king g5, queen h6 check, king g4, and uh, rook captures on f4 will be checkmate. Uh, but yeah, after this, uh, I believe it was it was uh, rook d7. No, it was uh, rook f7. Yeah, after the after rook f7, this was move 45. It was in this position that uh, Norwegian international master Lasse Ostebolovic resigned the game. So a very nice uh, a very nice win by Lila, and uh, I mean, definitely, I mean, probably we'd have to check if if uh, a, a strong engine would also capture uh, the pawn on h6 probably probably it would but uh, also it was a very interesting game so i do hope you enjoyed it and uh, you know if uh, if you always uh, lo are looking for new ideas how to tackle the french uh, then I, I hope this was a, a a useful game for you to to maybe even learn something from and uh, yeah, I did mention this in my previous video, but uh, if you're just tuning in, Lila is now also playing uh, on Lee Chess. And uh, this is a, a photo I made uh, in the morning. So she, she had 332 followers, but now I believe she has over a thousand. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, do check out my previous video there. I will say a lot more about Lila. So if, you, if you're interested, you can check, uh, check uh, some, of, some more of her games. Uh, and uh, f uh, follow her, you know, process and uh, her progress. So I will put all of the links in the description below. Do check out all of them. There will be more games Lila played. You can follow her on all of the social networks, and you can also follow uh, I am Loveless on Leeches. You know, feel free to challenge him for a game as well. Maybe he will be interested and accepts it. And uh, yeah, uh, that's basically it. Uh, I would like to thank. Uh, Zimon Siren and uh, Michael Sterling uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, the top left one will be previous game played by Lila Zero against uh, Ian Lovelace. It's game one of their match, so do check it out as well if you're just tuning in. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, hopefully another interesting video. Thank you all.